Good morning and welcome to Children's Chapel. My name is the Reverend Ruth Ann Garcia and I am so pleased to be here with you today uh, to celebrate this lovely day, this Valentine's Day, this last Sunday after Epiphany before we enter into the season of Lent next week, which begins with what? Shrove Tuesday, yes, that's right, and Ash Wednesday. So please join me for a little virtual gathering on Ash Wednesday as well. And you can tell me all about the yummy pancakes that you may be making at home on Tuesday. So I look forward to all of those things coming um, up. But I did want to say that isn't it just a wonderful thing on this last Sunday after Epiphany that we get to celebrate also Valentine's Day. And uh, a day when we give cards or Valentines uh, to those we love, like our moms, or our dads, or our family, or a friend, and uh, get to think too about how much Jesus loves us. So in that vein, I want to start us with a song this morning, and I hope that you'll join along with me. All right, everyone. Are you ready to sing this song about how much Jesus loves us? I hope so. So here we go. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Big and little, short and tall, our Lord Jesus loves them all. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And one more verse. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, boys and girls and all folks too. Jesus loves us, it is true. Jesus loves the little children of the world. So now we come to the time in Children's Chapel in which we hear the gospel or the stories from Jesus's life and ministry. And this Morning's gospel is from the gospel of Mark. So we put our finger and our thumb together and we make a cross and we say the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and let them and led them up to a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became glistening and dazzling white, such as none other on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud came down and overshadowed them, and from the cloud came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around them, they saw no one with them, and only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus told them not to tell anybody about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. And he would say, praise to you, Lord Christ. So as we just heard, today we um, were able to glimpse, G glimpse, get a glimpse of Jesus, if you will, in a wonderful new way for his disciples. So they worked uh, with Jesus alongside Jesus, and they saw him do many wonderful things, miracles, healing folks, um, giving food to many. But in this moment, when they go up to the mountaintop, the disciples also get a glimpse of the glory of God, which is beautiful. Remember sometimes maybe you are standing by the ocean or you're in a garden or maybe you're looking at someone you love and you just are caught up in how pretty it looks and how beautiful and fresh everything is. Well, this is a glimpse of God's glory when we see it too, right? 
Or maybe when we look at uh, someone who loves us and we see reflected off their face just how much they do care for us. So in this way, the disciples today are are all together seeing Jesus in a new way and getting a glimpse of this glorious person who is the Son of God, but still their friend, still their teacher, still one that they walk with and talk with. And as we Christians have um, gone through the centuries, we still feel this um, wonderful gloriousness of Jesus, even as we see him as our friend, as someone who loves us, and as someone who walks with us still. So um, this Valentine's Day, I ask that you reflect that glorious love for uh, those that you love as well. And as we go forward into Lent, if you want to, you might even want to uh, make prayers because uh, we're get, coming up to the time of our prayers. You can, you can draw a prayer, you can write a prayer, and you could make a prayer box. So for example, if I had a box like this, maybe I would put a prayer in it for um, my little puppy. Or I might put a prayer in it for my husband, Jeremy. But um, a prayer box might be something you might want to think about, um, not just on Valentine's Day, um, but also as we begin the season of Lent next week. Special prayers are really important um, for those we love. They really change things. They really do. So speaking of which, it's the time in Children's Chapel where we come together to pray. And wherever you are, I invite you to say aloud or to think in your heart, uh, those things that you want to pray about and those people and uh, creatures you want to pray for. So let's all pray. Gracious God, we gather together the prayers of all of those in your children's chapel community. We give you thanks for them and for their ministries and the ways that they use all the gifts that they have to help others and to show your love into the world. We ask that you help us to enjoy this blessed Sunday and that in all of the seasons of Lent, we remember just how glorious and wonderful and close to us you are. Amen. All right, friends, now comes the time in Children's Chapel where we say our goodbye song. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Go in peace, dear friends, and I have a special Valentine for you right after this. Bye, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. And I send you lots of love and virtual hugs and kisses. Bye-bye. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Craft Time. I'm Naomi. And today's craft is going to be a Valentine's Day craft because February 14th is Valentine's Day. And I don't know if you know the origin behind why we have Valentine's Day, but it actually is a holiday that we celebrate based on a patron saint named Saint Valentine. And he was a Roman priest and a doctor who was sent to jail because he was caught marrying couples who were not supposed to be married because in his time, the emperor didn't want any weddings and marriages to be happening. But St. Valentine believed in love and so he was performing these weddings for people and he was put in jail for that. And he also had a great faith in God and would teach people about the reason why he loves people and it was because God loved him. So the day before he was sentenced to death, he wrote a letter to his jailer's daughter who was blind and who he had helped teach how to read and um, help educate her. He signed the letter to her from your Valentine. And then now today, we often give gifts of 
a lot of times chocolates or roses or stuffed animals and we sign it from your Valentine. And today's craft, so that's a little bit of a history, is going to be making this cute little heart wreath, I guess. I used red and yellow, but you can use any color you'd like. And here's what you're gonna need. I do have some regular construction paper and a pair of scissors. These are really big scissors. And I think the stapler is gonna be your easiest um, tool for connecting the hearts together. But if you do have tape or glue, that might work as well. But the stapler is probably gonna be the easiest. And here's what you're gonna do. So take your construction paper and you're gonna cut strips. So here's my strips already cut and they're probably only about an inch, um, inch wide and I cut them the long way. So cut some strips out. For this size wreath, I used eight strips. So cut at least eight of them out. If you wanna make a bigger wreath, then go ahead and cut more. And once you have the strips, you're going to fold it in half, and that's gonna be the bottom of your heart. And then you're just going to take both of these ends and make them meet in the middle like this. Okay, so you're just taking one of your strips, fold them in half, and then take the ends and kind of have them meet in the middle. And make those ends touch right here and you're gonna staple it right in the middle. Now you could do it just with one staple. I think I did two. So I did one staple right here. And then if you flip it, you can staple the other side. And there is your heart. So there's one heart. So go ahead and make the rest of your strips into hearts. And again, if you don't have a stapler, then you would just tape it right there or you would just glue it right there in the middle as well. You might just have to hold it a little bit to make sure it stays. And then once you have eight or so hearts cut out or um, stapled and made together, then all you're going to do is connect the hearts and staple them. Can you see the staple right there? So you're just gonna take one heart and then staple another heart in the middle right here. And then you're just gonna keep adding them so you make a wreath like this. And again, you can use any color you'd like. And if you only have white paper, of course you can color the white paper, add your own designs and drawings on them. And then you'll have a beautiful wreath and you can add um, some string or yarn here if you wanna hang it on a door somewhere. So I hope you have fun making these. It's pretty easy and simple, but if you need a parent to help you, you can have them help. And when you see these hearts, I hope it reminds you of St. Valentine and the amazing man that he was, that he believed in God. He stood true to his faith, even until he died. And he is our patron saint of love. And that's who we remember on St. Valentine's Day. See you next time.